Hello and welcome to another Moog demo library. In today's video, we're going to explore Labyrinth, and in particular, we're going to talk about the way that Labyrinth's voice is structured. The approach with Labyrinth was to offer something entirely unique and take a lot of different elements from different types of synthesis and provide you with a new way of approaching sound design. The structure begins with two sound sources. We have a sine wave VCO and we have a triangle wave mod VCO. The mod VCO has a wider range and is able to hit sub-audio rates, so if you need to use an LFO, it can serve that purpose. Now the two VCOs are fed into a mixer, and the mixer is inspired by classic Moog designs in that beyond noon it will clip and saturate and add harmonics to a signal, and this is particularly useful when we're dealing with low harmonic waveforms like a sine wave and a triangle wave. Additionally in the mixer, we have a ring mod level that is a ring mod output of both oscillators. We have a noise level, and then we have a noise tone control that acts like a high pass and low pass style DJ filter that applies to the noise output. Now from the mixer, we split into two separate processing paths. We have a voltage controlled wave folder that's an expanded version of Mavis's wave folder with the bias control and voltage control over the folding. And then we have a 12 dB state variable filter that smoothly morphs between a low pass and a band pass response. So it gives us something a little bit different from the classic Moog ladder filter. Then we have a blend control. And what this does is it actually blends between the wave folder output and the VCF output. Now both the wave folder and the VCF have their own VCA. So what the blend is doing is blending between those two VCA outputs. Now if we look between the two processing elements, we have an order switch. And what this allows us to do is play with the routing of this processing. So if we flip the switch up, we're able to route the wave folder into the filter, and the blend knob will then mix between the wave folded output and a filtered version of the wave folded output. Now if we flip the order switch all the way down, we're able to route the filter into the wave folder, and so the blend knob would blend between the raw filter output and a folded filter output. If we set the switch to parallel, then the two processing elements don't interact with each other, and the blend will just move between the raw wave folding output and the filtered output. So beyond that, we have two decay-only envelopes in the style of DFAM. Envelope 1 is used to modulate most of the elements of the voice. So if we want to do pitch modulation, if we want to modulate the folder, or if we want to modulate the filter, that's all done with EG1. And then EG2 is controlling the VCAs for both the folder and the filter. Now we can also modulate oscillator 1 with the mod VCO by turning up this FM knob which can give us vibrato when the mod VCO is acting as an LFO, or give us audio rate frequency modulation if we want that. Then the two sequencers are set by default to modulate different parts of the path. So sequencer 1 is modulating the pitch of VCO1, as well as the wave folder with this knob right here. And sequencer 2 is going to modulate the pitch of the mod VCO, as well as the filter. So let's now explore. I have the sequencers chain, so it's playing a 16-step pattern. And both the VCO and the mod VCO are going to be following the same voltage. And let's give a listen to some of the ways that we can play with this voice. So we can start by just focusing on the wave folder. You can hear I just have a nice sine wave melody playing. And let's listen to how the folder sounds. You can play with the biasing, which will affect the symmetry of the folding. We can listen to how it sounds when we use EG1 to modulate the folding. This is an attenuverter, so we can apply negative or positive modulation. And then let's listen to how it sounds having sequencer one modulate the folder. So you 
you can hear with the sequencer modulation, we end up getting steps that are more folded or less folded, and it's a very stepped modulation. We can also hear how it sounds when we drive VCO1 a little bit harder into the wave folder. So you can hear that there's a range of tones that we're able to get there. Now let's listen to the filter. Right now I have it set up as a low pass. And because I'm feeding a sine wave into it, there's not really much for the filter to bite into. But let's actually listen to how it sounds if I FM the VCO with the mod VCO and I'm able to add a little bit more harmonic content for the filter to use. modulation and also increase resonance. And let's hear how it sounds if I morph into a bandpass filter. You can hear that the resonance does not self-oscillate, but still gives us some nice, almost acidic character if we want to do something in that style. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the order switch so that the folder is running into the filter and let's listen to some of the things that we can do there. For now I'm going to set the blend control to just focus on the wave folder. And turn the FM down again. And now since I'm using the wave folder to add harmonics to my sine wave, when I then blend back over to my filter, and I'll set that back to a low pass. We can hear that the filter has a little bit more to bite into because of the added harmonics from the wave folder. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull my oscillator down and pitch a little bit. I'm also going to go ahead and I'm going to set my mod VCO down so that it's moving like an LFO and I'm going to take its output and I'm going to use it to control the blend. Then I'm going to set the blend to noon. And you can hear that we can smoothly morph between the filter and the folder. You can also take a moment and listen to how the ring mod sounds. I'm going to remove the blend modulation. here we can start getting a lot of nice aggressive sounds with the ring mod and the FM options. Now let's take a moment and I'm going to flip the order switch all the way down and listen to how it sounds when we run the filter into the wave folder and I'm going to start by just listening to the filter and then we'll listen to the folded filter.
you can hear that if we run the wave folder after the filter, we start getting into a lot of interesting, very distorted tones. And another thing that we should do is listen to the noise output. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to set the order switch back into parallel. And first we can listen to the wave folder output with noise. And you can hear because noise is so complex, there's not really much for the folder to do. But now if we listen to the filter, and even increase the resonance all the way, we can start getting some interesting pitched noise from the filter. And you'll notice that in low pass, I'll get a slightly different tone than in band pass, which adds a little bit more harmonics in the mid range. And another thing that we can do here is control the tone of the noise. So we can thin it out. If I remove resonance and open the filter back up, you can hear, just gives us a range of noise tones. So if I want to thin it out a little bit with high passing, then increase my resonance again. I can play with the tone of that pitch noise. So as you can hear and see, Labyrinth offers a multitude of possibilities for how you approach sound design and really gives you a lot of different points of flexibility. And that's not even focusing on the patch bay at all. So without doing any patching, there's all sorts of places to explore. And then once you're ready to integrate patching, those paths open up exponentially.